So uh, today's kind of an interesting day. I'm going to show you something pretty cool. Uh, my dad and I went to a location to pick up a safe and we happened to see an item that we thought would be good to use for certain situations. So my dad agreed that we would go back up during the public auction which was a couple days after we were up there and uh, bid on an item. Uh, it's actually his. I'm just doing all the work, but uh, we're going to use it together, and I, I get to play with it as much as I want, basically. So you might be asking, what is this? Let me show you. Now you're probably asking, what is that? That, my friends, is a military generator. It's in, uh, I think it's an MEP006A. Let's go have a look. So currently, I did make a video of us actually getting this thing here. And I will be posting it probably separately. Yeah. If you'd like to see the tag. It's an MEP six or zero zero six A. Now this tag is wrong as far as the frequency. I'm not actually sure yet because I haven't run it. But it is uh, a sixty kilowatt generator. Sixty kilowatts. It is a three phase, but can be converted to a single phase. So, today, I'm going to attempt to fire this thing up. Let me open it up and give you a, uh, an overview of everything. And then, uh, we'll see what's going on with this bad boy. Open. Now, before we go too much further, I did want to uh, tell you something. Um, you're probably going to ask how much, how much, uh, how much we paid for it. And uh, since it's not mine, I'm not going to tell you. But I will tell you that motor in there. A gentleman actually uh, would have gave us the same amount of money for that motor by itself, without the rest of this whole entire thing, for the same price we bought it for. Um, it was an amazing deal, let's put it that way. Now you might also ask what we're going to do with this thing. We plan on actually trying to bring it to disaster relief areas and uh, and certain situations we, we are going to hopefully do some good with it. Can't guarantee that. I can't guarantee it's even going to run. But we're going to try to start it up today. So anyway, let's see what we got. Let's take a quick look at the uh, Inside, you got operating instructions. You've got your engine, oil pressure, coolant temperature, fuel level, battery, and runtime. Check this out 142 hours. Don't know if that's accurate, but I'm gonna say it is. I don't know. Then you've got your generator portion of things, you've got your frequency your percent of power output, your rated current, and your volts. All right, This is actually current too I believe. I don't know. It's configured differently. That is percentage of power. Um, you can increase and decrease your frequency and your voltage. Um, it does have like an override for errors. It's called a battle short. It's kind of, kind of a cool deal. Um, you can run these in parallel or in uh, independently. You can hook multiple of these up, and there are outputs here, and then your power output there. And when you run this in parallel or series, you actually connect it to an external control box, which balances the two, I guess. Um, engine voltage sensing, local remote. That's probably here. Your in your feedback panel lights. Uh, you've got a fault indicator panel here. 
and uh, engine specifications. This is the intake for the air. You just need it open while it's running. I will show you what the plug looks like here. It's a big old military plug. I guess that's a military standard. I'm not sure. Um, let's go around this side, I guess. Behind this panel is where all the connections are. I will pop this off and show you. And we'll see what's behind this panel. Alright, so I'm probably going to leave that off to run it. Basically, bad footage. I got mosquitoes biting me. I'm trying to kill them. I need to put some spray. Let me go get some spray. I hate these things. Alright, got me some bug repellent. Man, I hate them mosquitoes. They're bad out here when it starts getting dark. Um, so here is your terminal. Now, this generator actually has a 12 wire lead on it. And you can um, switch it over to single phase. 220 or 120. Actually, it's 208 or 120. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the tie connections you've got a bunch of uh, instrumentations you've got a relay box another box there's another box over there and then your control panel box um, your ground is out here actually or an external extra ground there's look how big the bolts are for that generator there's your outputs for your generator on the actual head in the back back there it does have uh, wiring schematics and stuff on the side which is pretty cool so here's the uh, the big old motor. Look how big us, this motor is in this beast. This is an Alice and Chambers six cylinder model 3500. It's a big boy. It is a big freaking engine. It does have a turbo on it. I personally haven't messed with diesels a whole lot, so we'll get to play with it for the first time. This is the battery tray. I already took the actual tray out because it was in pretty rusty bad shape. So I'm going to clean it up and then I'll put it back. Um, all the other stuff, filters and your tow turbo charger. There's another uh, wiring schematic up here. This little bitty muffler. So this thing's going to be loud. Here's your exhaust. It's uh, got a threaded fitting on it which is pretty sweet. Run that over to my neighbor's house and annoy them with the exhaust. Ah. Oh, this has a uh, little bucket in here for parts and things. Um, here is the generator head itself. That is a big generator head. There you can see it. 60 kilowatts. That's awesome. Them big old mounting bolts. Uh, this thing's pretty cool in the fact that it has an external uh, fuel source. You can actually hook up an external fuel source, or it does have an internal. It's the tank down there. It's a 50 gallon, 55 gallon tank. 50 of it's usable. Comes with a. Uh, this actually has an extra hose so that you can externally connect to your fuel supply, which is a pretty cool deal. The air intake, the air filter. Like I said the other switching boxes. Another wiring schematic. It does have the uh, single 120 volt out here for external use and something. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the overview I'm going to give you. Uh, I don't really know what else to show you. There's not much on top. But I am going to uh, install the batteries. I've got a couple of batteries that will work. I'm going to install some batteries and we're going to try to fire this up. We're going to see if we can annoy my neighbors. Because this is going to be loud. Um, <clears throat> diesel goes in here. I believe it's got a little diesel left in it. Really not for sure until I get the power turned on and see if the fuel gauge works. <clears throat> um, records. I got my button stuck in there, didn't I? Okay. Well, um... I'm going to get the batteries hooked up and we'll see if the uh, gauges and indicators work. And uh, mosquitoes are still eating me. 
We'll fire this baby up, see if we can get any voltage out of it. I want to run it for at least 10 minutes, get it warmed up, and then I'll shut it down. Hopefully it isn't too loud. It's the middle of the afternoon. Now this thing's a brick. It's not sitting, not sitting on any sort of trailer or anything. Um, my good friend, my mom's boyfriend, um, I've been working, fixed a few things for him, so he did me a favor and uh, brought me some trailer axles. So I'm going to whack those things up and uh, install it on this base. This is a solid frame. It doesn't really need any extra support. It's on a crate. I can mount these axles straight to it, uh, which is probably what I'll do, but that's down the road. So let's get the batteries and hook them up, see if the indicators and gauges work, and we'll try to fire this bad boy up. It has not been ran for at least three years, but it did have a tune-up right before it sat where it sat for three years. And uh, it's got uh, a radiator up here. Uh, last time I opened it up, it was nice and clean in there. Looks pretty good to me. So we'll, uh, we'll see if we can fire this bad boy up. That's just been sitting for three years. Now this is a, uh, a cold start. It, doesn't look like it has any glow plugs on it at all but I'm not so sure of that but I'm fairly certain it doesn't but it might I don't know so uh, yeah we're gonna fire this bad boy up it is designed to run and start up in extremely cold weather uh, let's see somewhere on here we're starting at temperatures below minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit it requires that the winterizing kit be installed. So basically it'll start at around negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit and above. Otherwise it has to have the kit, therm thermal, the winterizer kit, which uh, I looked up online. I don't think this one has it, but honestly I'm not for sure. I haven't done the research yet. If it's actually installed or not, I don't know. So let's see if this bad boy starts up. See if we can annoy some neighbors, you want to? Yeah. Let me get the batteries in there and then we'll set the camera up and let her rip. Alrighty. Well, uh, these batteries I got, the only things I have, these should still be good, but they might be dead. I hope they're not. I charged them and they seem like they held a good charge and I tested them and they held a good, they were about half, half week maybe. These connectors don't look the best, but they've got a good, decent connection on the bottom. This I could not tighten. It actually turned, so I beat it on there until it was tight. It's still really tight. So let's just go see if we even have uh, power over here. The engine's on run. Let's see if we have lights. Yep, we have lights. Um, cool. That's a good start already. So we need to be in single op op operation, a little oil. All of our lights work. That's a test. Obviously low oil pressure. Now it says it's got <laughs> no fuel, but I'm not sure if it'll... I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure how that will work. So, I don't know. Let's just try to fire this thing up my DC ampers for my battery charging I have no idea we're just gonna see if this thing starts so uh, it's starting to sprinkle but we're gonna we're just gonna crank it we're gonna let it crank and see if it even cranks Read the descriptions. I checked all the fluids were good. All right. Check the fuel level by placing the start run switch in the run position and the battle short switch in the on position. Okay. 
We got fuel. I hear it pumping. Another quarter tank. Oil pressures. They need to be closed, but I think we'll leave it. It is Alright, doors are fastened, we're good, battery is connected. Alright, stop, run, start. The start position. Continue holding the stop, start, run switch in the start position until the oil pressure is above 20 psi. Main generator voltage is normal. All right, you guys ready? Here we go.
doors shut. That is awesome. That is an awesome piece of equipment right there. And it's huge. Look how big that diesel is. It's a big diesel. Well, maybe it's not for some people, but that's a big diesel. Well, it runs. Um, it seems to function. Everything seems to be working fine. The only point of leaking at all that I can see is right there. And I don't know if it's leaking or if it was like that. I don't recall seeing that, but I'll have to uh, I'll have to check on these things. Um, other than that, when I shut it down, I saw the frequency peak up to about 53. Now I grabbed my oscilloscope and checked it, and it was actually reading at about 47 to 48 hertz. So this is actually accurate, but it's not letting me adjust it. So Time to do a little bit of troubleshooting. We'll see if it's something simple, but that'll be another day. That's the end of this video. My name is Russ. RWG Research is my website, rwgresearch.com. And uh, currently just saw an MEP006A startup after three plus years of sitting like a top. That's awesome. All right. Peace and love to you guys. Have a good day. God bless. See you.